This call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, brother, sorry I'm late. We just got out of Bible study with the uh, Spanish Bible Church here. Hey, no problem, no problem. Do, do you speak Spanish? Yo creo que no tengo poquito español, sí, yo creo poquito. Wow, very good, very good, very good. Okay, um... Uh, no, Mr. Hovind, uh, I was just thinking uh, there's been a new motion that the enemy camp posted, and uh, if you like, I don't know if you're interested, I could read it. Uh, you'll probably hear about it Friday, if not sooner, from Ernie. Okay. Uh, let me bring it up real quick. Um, you mean a new, new motion put into court? I think so. I think they sent it to the judge. I mean, I don't know how this, uh, I hate to even mention his name, but this baddie guy, I don't know how he gets like so this information so quickly. You know, he must be like... That really plugged into like uh, you know wherever this stuff gets posted. I don't even know where, but um, if he's like part of their team or what. But in any event, uh, he work. He probably works for them, right? Yeah, I work for the IRS, sir. There you go. There you go. Well, here's what uh, the new motion. I want to find it real quick. Um, it's a that basically. Uh, is this it? No, that's not it. Just give me just... Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, um, it's called a new motion filed today by U.S. prosecutors. Uh, points will be highlighted. Highlighted. Uh, it's, well, you know, okay, that's a different topic, but it says, um, Come now, the United States of America, and files its motion in Lamine. Well, I don't know what Lamine means. Uh, Lemony, in Lemony. Yeah. Lemony, okay, what does that mean? Just curious. I don't remember, but go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, at this time, the government moves in limine and asks the defense counsel, to, the defendants and defense witnesses be prohibited from making the following types of arguments, suggestions, and claims during the course of the trial, including jury selection, opening statements, testimony, and closing arguments. Motion in limine number one. Jury nullification. The government moves in limine to limit the introduction of evidence or argument suggesting jury nullification. That is, the jury member's power to disregard their oaths and decide the case without regard the court's instructions thereon. Such jury nullification arguments and efforts to introduce evidence in support of such arguments are improper. Uh, and then the editor's note, this is our friend uh, Racer X, I'll call him. He put, jury nullification is a constitutional right to push back against unconstitutional tyrannical laws. So um, they go on to give a case in Trujillo 714F.2D at 105.06. We concluded that a criminal defendant is unentitled, is unentitled to a jury instruction which alerts the jury of its de facto power and further that defense counsel may not argue jury nullification during closing argument because the jury enjoys no right to nullify criminal laws and the defendant enjoys the right to neither a nullification instruction <clears throat> nor a nullification argument to the jury. The potential for nullification is no ba basis for admitting otherwise irrelevant evidence. And, you know, it, it, the title of this is called uh, Prosecutor Scared. They're trying to silence jury and evidence in Ken Hoven case. That was the title of... Uh, you know, Racer X gave it. It goes on to talk about other things about that they shouldn't say that they're going to affect a human being's life or to, you know, put a felony on the part of another human being. And I could read it if you like. Uh, I certainly will. And I, I've printed it off and, and it might take a few days to get to you. But it appears that they're running scared about this jury nullification thing. Well, I think every American on the, in the world, in, in America, ought to, ought to know about jury nullification. It's time we take back the con to get back to the Constitution. If they passed a law that said it's against the law to spit on the sidewalk in Dallas and you got on a jury and you didn't think the law was any good, you have a right, even if they got a videotape of somebody spitting on the sidewalk in Dallas, you as a juror can vote not guilty. That nullifies the law. That is a historical American right. I cannot believe. Is it Tiffany Eggers that put that motion in? It's uh, Pamela C. Marsh and uh, Tiffany Hope Eggers. That's right. Both of them. They are, they are desperate. Yes. Wow. Sp spread that worldwide, brother. We will. We will. And uh, 
Um, my, my friend Racer X and I were talking, and uh, you know, we've got this Rebecca Horton. I, I don't, I, I, it's like so many different topics going on here from so many different angles, but you know, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, Rebecca Horton, uh, Tiffany Hope Eggers, Pamela C. Marsh, Mahel, Michelle Heldemeyer. And just, I, just, I don't understand what's going on with these women. But, but you're absolutely right. Uh, here's another thing that they said, uh, Dr. Hoven. There's so many points to this article, and I want to make sure I hit the highlights. But no, no uh, maybe I should read it all. Do you, do you mind if I do that? No, go for it, please. Uh, okay, very good, very good, yep. Uh, the government, okay, so the government specifically seeks to prohibit counsel, the defendants, and the defense witnesses from making any references to the possible punishments that could be imposed and or making statements to the following effect. The jury has the power to determine the course of the fate of a human being or don't give the defendant a felony conviction or you have the power to say yes to the government and you have the power to say no to the government and you have the power to take a man's freedom away. In other words, they don't want uh, you to be able to make those statements. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's shocking. Yeah, it's absolutely shocking. Uh, they go on to say, this isn't all, Mr. Hoven. It goes on. Uh, motion in limine number two. Uh, improper argument concerning government's former, count, former counsel. In other words, they don't want you to have the right to talk about the government's former counsel. And it go, the editor puts a note in here and says the U.S. Pro prosecutor, Tiffany Eggers, is the same prosecutor from Ken Hovind's first case in which he was illegally persecuted, prosecuted, and the judge, Margaret Casey Rogers, was caught saying Ken Hovind's crime was worse than rape. The, and this, and so I'll, that's the, the, the end of the editor's note, and then it goes on to say, the government moves in limine to prohibit defense counsel, the defendants, and any defense witnesses from making any mention of prior allegations and or claims against any prior assistant U.S. attorney who handled any motion of the cases against defendant H Hovind. Uh, motion in limine number three. And then here's a uh, editor's note. Oh, wait, wait. Yep. You know, you know what that was about, right? They don't want the jury to know about John David Roy. Amen. You, yeah, amen, brother. I know. I know. They, they don't want him to know that okay. the, the guy previously was a pedophile and uh, hung himself in prison. Yeah, I understand. The editor even put a note in here. Okay, here's, here's another argument that they put forward. Improper argument concerning the Internal Revenue Service. And then the editor put in a note. The IRS has a pedophile help throw Kent Hovind in prison, and they do not want this information leaking to the jury. So th this is uh, leaving the editor's note and going back to the motion. The government moves in limine to prohibit defense counsel, the defendants, and any defense witnesses from making any mention of allegations against and or alleged conduct of the Int Internal Revenue Service in Washington, D.C., allegations against and or alleged conduct of the Internal Revenue Service in Washington, D.C., and or any of its employees is not relevant to the defendant's trial. <laughs> it's not relevant. Are they dumb in any other area, or is that the only one they're stupid in? Hello? <laughs> they're, they're dumb in every single area. Every single area. The whole thing is about the IRS. Who is this IRS? Who are they? It's a Puerto Rican collection agency. If you owe them some money, pay them. If they're going to act like a mafia, and in other words, if you don't pay me, then we're going to you know, throw you in prison. Okay, then just tell everybody, hey folks, I'm extorting money out of Hovind. He doesn't have to do this, but if he does it, we'll throw him in prison. Just be honest. I'll pay him. I yes. want to go back and preach. If they will say, Hovind, you don't owe this money, but if you don't pay us 200 bucks a week or something, then we're going to come after you. Yeah. They want to come across as the good guy. I did everything their law says. I mean, you can read the documents, brother. Yeah. I have nothing to hide. I, I obeyed the law. They did not. Yes, yeah, circulate this new motion worldwide. Tell everybody, look at what they are doing. Yeah, we, we will do that. It, it goes on. I'm not through. I'm not through. Uh, uh, as I continue to read... <clears throat> okay, I want to make sure I picked up at the right spot here. Uh, okay, um... Okay, you, you heard me saying, and its employees is not relevant to the defendant's trial. So they're saying none of this is relevant. When it absolutely is relevant, they go on to say, none of the above is relevant to any fact that is of consequence in this case, and even assuming for the sake of argument that the evidence is relevant, any relevance it, ha any relevance it has 
is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice and confusion of the issues that admission of the evidence would create. And then uh, it puts an editor's note. This, Wait a minute. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> unfair con confusion of the issue. They confused the jury horribly on all the issues in my first case. That poor jury didn't know which way was north. It was amazing, you know. The law says you have to have two or more transactions in one day over ten thousand, and the judge changed it to say one transaction under ten thousand. Yeah. So if you go take ten dollars out of your bank, you go to prison for five years. Yeah. I mean, hello. Talk about creating confusion. Yeah. In other words, they don't want us to do what they did. <laughs> they they don't want you to to insert clarity in a situation where they properly confused everything. You know. So they they feel like they they can <laughs> right. They don't want, they don't want us to blow away the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> right. They've got they've got the court, entire courtroom filled with smoke, and they don't want you to blow it away. Like you need to leave the smoke in the room. You're not allowed to blow it away. Absolutely. Uh, the ed the editor went went on to say. By their own admission, they know if the jury slash public knew about Ken Hovind's case, then there would be a massive awakening in America demanding Ken Hovind goes free. So I'm leaving the editor's note, and I'm going back to the motion. Therefore, mention of such a would be prohibited, pursuant, should be prohibited, pursuant to federal rules of evidence, rules 401 and 403. And then he goes on to say, it's not even done yet. <laughs> motion in limine number four. Improper argument concerning policy and improper argument concerning policy and or changes in policy. The government moves in limine to prohibit defense counsel, the defendants, and any defense witnesses from making any mention of policies and or changes in policy of the United States or any agency thereof, i.e. the Internal Revenue Service, the Department of Justice, etc. Policies of the United States, any agency thereof, and or changes in IRS policy are not relevant to the defendant's trial. <laughs> Remember, uh, Dr. Hovind, just a few days ago, they came out and apologized for misapplying structuring laws to uh, legitimate citizens, law-abiding citizens, and they don't want you to be able to bring that up because that might confuse the, uh, the poor jury, you know. Oh my goodness. I don't, I'm having a hard time keeping a straight face and actually reading this. Oh, this, poor Tiffany. I mean, she's got a job to do. She works for these guys, and I, I, don't, I don't know the lady at all. But I pray God will use this to get a hold of her heart. Why do you work for people like this? Quit your job. Go become a lawyer someplace where you don't have your hands tied like this. Amen. It's insane. Wow. Yeah, amen. They are desperately, they're frantic. Yeah, this is, yeah, they're absolutely desperate. They, turn, turn the heat up another couple hundred degrees on this case. Amen. We're going to do our best, uh, Dr. Hovind. But every single one of these points that they're trying to make, uh, they're trying to, they understand that it's going to be just disastrous that the IRS has recently changed the policy regarding uh, misapplying structuring laws to law-abiding law citizen. It's going to be disastrous for someone to find out, you know, about your previous counsel. It's just, let me go on to read the editor's note. The editor's note, the IRS admits and apologizes that they abused uh, structuring laws created for drug dealers. The IRS has used illegal laws and evidence to steal a quarter of a billion dollars the American businesses and shut the mouth of churches who are not incorporated under the censorship of the IRS, who admit churches do not need to incorporate. So that was the editor's note. I'm going back to the motion. Policies of the United States Department of Justice are cont uh, contained in the United States Attorney's Manual. The United States Attorney's Manual only provides internal Department of Justice guidance. That is, it does not create any rights and does not place any limitations on otherwise lawful Litigative, lit, I can't pronounce that word. Per Sixty seconds remaining. Um, Leg legitimate. Oh, le 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 yeah, le it's not legitimate. It's le le legitative. Le I can't. I'm not, I'm not even going. Litig litigative. Anyway, uh, Doctor Hovind, uh, you're welcome to call back. I think I will promote this video and I'll promote that article and that motion. It's just they are very uh, frantic and desperate. Spread it all over the panhandle of Florida, specifically. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this needs to be known. Amen.
it, this is a classic case of the, they want a stupid jury. Yeah, they can't. The website, fully, fully informed jury, F-I-J, fully informed jury something. It's in the kennel. Look at the back of the kennel. I refer to that. There's a website. See if that's still up. But click, click that in there, too, about jury nullification. I will. All right, brother. I'll call right back. Okay, okay. God bless. All right, that was Dr. Hovind. I will end this video, and we'll upload this under uh, Dr. Ken Hovind responds to the uh, recent motion by Pamela C. Marsh and Tiffany Hope Eggers, who I consider uh, um, just absolutely um, minions of the devil in this situation. Who paid call from? Ken Hovind. An inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balance is $56.14. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the cost of this call, press 8 now. To accept this call, press 5. To this call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, brother, one thought. It's going to be very interesting to see how Judge Casey Rogers rules on this motion. Yes. That will speak, that will speak volumes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That will really crack the... Oh, man, this is... Okay, keep going. This is great. I'm loving it. Okay. No, I think I think we were near the end, but I'll go ahead and finish it out. And let me say this, because Batty actually works for the IRS, and I get these motions from Batty. It could be that I'm being set up, right? I never know whether I get anything from him as valid or not. Uh, I got this from his... Um, you know, page where he basically spends uh, all day long, you know, uh, bashing and, you know, so he could be setting us up, but uh, I wouldn't imagine he would put out a false motion. He, you know, typically the stuff he, you know, because he works for them, it, it usually is true. So I'm assuming all of this is true. So, um, well, uh, Bernie can check it out on Pacer or anybody who's got Pacer. Jay, uh, uh Brother Hughes, up in, he's a lawyer up in uh, Michigan. Okay, no, I do have a Pacer account. I just, I, I'll just i have to go and look at your new case, and I, I guess I should see. Uh, I didn't know that they had to post it right away, so if, as long as it get posted right away, I should be able to see it and confirm it. Yeah, sure. Okay. No, I, I can do that even probably uh, while we're on the phone. So, okay, let me go ahead and finish off the reading. And I agree with you, sir. Uh, how Judge Margaret Casey Rogers rules on this motion will speak volumes. And we already know that she's... Uh, biased already and should have recused herself long ago and that um so anyway um let me go on and read um policies of the united states department of justice are contained in the united states attorney's manual the united states attorney's manual only provides internal department of justice guidance that is it does not create any rights and does not place any limitations on otherwise lawful litigative prerogatives of the department of justice mention of department of justice Policies and or changes in Department of Justice or Internal Revenue Service policies should be prohibited pursuant to the aforementioned, aforementioned authority and the Federal Rules of Evidence, Rules 401 and 403. Wherefore, the undersigned assistant United States Attorney files these motions in Lamine with the court respectfully submitted. Pamela C. Marsh uh, gives her phone number. Um, you know, what's interesting is that Pamela C. Marsh has the same phone number and same email address as Tiffany Hope Eggers. Why would Pamela C. Marsh have the same email address as Tiffany Hope Eggers? Kind of interesting. But anyway, that's the know. that's the end of the end of the um, okay. thing. And I don't know if you like. Um, um, maybe if you want to respond to that, I'll try to log into Pacer and I'll actually see if I can find it on Pacer. Well, yeah, I don't need a whole lot of response. It speaks for itself. This, there, in the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, uh, there's a big bully who's going to try to take over the gang, and, and uh, Butch or Sundance, whoever it was, says, well, we're going to have some rules for this knife fight. He said, rules? There ain't no rules in a knife fight. He said, yeah, no no kicking. And so then he kicks the guy. And he said, let me demonstrate. He goes through and he demonstrates no poking. And he, it's a hilarious scene where, you know, you can't do these things. Uh, they, are, they are desperately trying to... Hide the truth. This is simply the truth. What do I have to hide? I, I, I wrote letters to their guys they mentioned in their book of 517. I did exactly what I was told. I wrote letters to the IRS. They never responded except to come with a SWAT team. They stole.
stole money out of the house in 2004. Then they stole money out of the bank, I think, in 2007. Then the guy went and hung himself. I mean, these are the facts. This is what happened. Now, I agree, that's not relevant to this case. However, these structuring laws are completely relevant to the case. They're accusing me of preventing them from selling property. How did they get that property? Well, it was a government seizure. Oh, based on what? Based on the structuring violation. Hello? This is exactly ties in. <laughs> they, this is another example of why they should, they never should have brought this case to begin with, and they should drop it Friday like a hot potato. Just drop it. Pay the damages. I will go on my way and preach and leave me alone. I didn't ask for any of this. I don't want it now. But just drop this. And this is a classic case where everybody in America needs to be looking carefully exactly who is this IRS, exactly who is this U.S. government and federal system. Is this the Article Three court or is this, um, is this uh, something else? And I don't understand all of that, but plenty of people do. And I think they're worried that their matrix is getting exposed. I love that last, one of the last scenes in The Matrix where Neo finally stands there and these guys start shooting their guns and the bullets just stop in front of him and he reaches out and grabs one and the bullets fall to the ground and they take off terrorized, Agent Smith and Agent Brown and whoever the other ones were. I think that's what's happening here, brother. They are terrorized that their matrix is being exposed. Yep. I hope it is. Amen. Now Amen. why, why God would put me in this position? This call is from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. I am so Ill illiterate when it comes to all this legal jargon. I don't know. I am not equipped to handle this job. But that's kind of like God calling yeah. prophets all through the Bible, you know. Moses can't even talk right. Okay, go talk to Pharaoh. <laughs> Lord, I stutter again. Uh, you know, God chooses the least likely. He says, good. He picks a bunch of ignorant fishermen and says, here. Go preach the gospel to the whole world. <laughs> hey, that's right. I, I don't want it, uh, but I really think God is going to use this to reach millions for his kingdom. And so I'm still saying, God, get somebody else. I don't want to even go to court anymore. If they call me and said, Hoven, go home tonight, we'll leave you alone. I say, yes, let me go home. I don't want this. But they keep coming after me. They just keep coming back and coming back. If you read the book of Nehemiah, you see all kinds of uh, parallels here. Nehemiah just simply wanted to build a wall. And the enemy, Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershom the Arabian, they tried all kinds of things to stop him from building the wall, including threats, including legal action, you know, including violence, and including trying to scare him, scare tactics. Um, <laughs> There's so many prayers. I just want to build a wall. I want to help people know the Bible. I want to get people saved, and I want to get them then grounded in the Word where they can go get other people saved. Now, yeah. if the enemy camp is working for the devil, and that is their father, and they're willing to use lies, John 8, 44, because their father uses lies, well, then just tell everybody, hey, folks, we hate Christianity, we hate hope, and we're doing this because we don't like what he teaches. Don't make me look bad. Don't ruin my reputation. I, I Believe me, I'm a sinner. But, brother, I have tried for 46 years of my Christian life to do what's right. I have never tasted alcohol, ever. I'm 62. I've never taken drugs. I've been faithful to my wife of 41 years, both virgins on our honeymoon. I, I try to live for God. And they have destroyed my reputation as well as my family and finances and seized everything. I didn't ask for any of this. But God said Job was a righteous man. I think God would say Kent is a righteous man because I've been forgiven by the blood of Christ. I'm forgiven, and I'm trying to serve him. So I, I don't like it that they've ruined my reputation. Apologize. Quit doing this to people. We need government, for heaven's sake. We need lawyers. We need judges. We need courtrooms. I'm not against all that stuff. But don't lie and don't ruin my reputation. I didn't ask for this, and I don't want it now, and I hope it goes away. But hey. it doesn't look like it's going to. God, God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. And he hated the Ninevites. You know, um, on Friday, 
On Friday, um, uh, um, someone wants to interview you, but we told them that you were going to be in court. Do you have any idea when you'll be back, if you can call, make a call? It'll, it, it'll take all day. It'll, the court part will take five minutes. But the trip down there and back will take all day. Okay. Well, 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 in a holding tank. Yeah. No, that's where the Amer uh, American... Um, American Free Press was interested, but uh, we'll tell him Friday's a bad day. Well, uh, we can tell him Friday evening. No, he said it will take all day. And uh, well, do you think like in the afternoon, maybe real late? After five thirty, he said he'll be oh. back. Oh, after five thirty? Yeah. Yeah. We, but then I got locked down from six to seven thirty. So after seven thirty, I could call him. Okay, okay. Let's let's go with after seven thirty. Um, but he hasn't given us a number yet, so we're still waiting for the. Oh, or do you have the number, Rudy? Did he give it to you? Uh, I need to. Okay. I need to look. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you before Friday, hopefully. And okay. Also, Mr. Hovind, I did confirm that that their motion is indeed in Pacer. It's 34 pages long. Uh, it has a lot of attachments, other than that, just that short uh, four motions. I'm gonna print that out, and uh, I'm gonna have UPS store mail that to you. Uh, it's absolutely over the top. I mean, like you said, this is so shocking that they want to cover up the apology they want to cover up the previous uh, charges and allegations against the previous uh, prosecutors um, you know changes in policy it's just I can't even imagine anybody t you know taking these guys seriously you know don't talk about jury nullification why, why can't if their case was so strong against you and they felt like they had a case why would it even matter if you brought up jury nullification if, if in, in, in other words dr holman if i felt like i was a prosecutor and i had a very good case against you and you started talking about some nonsense about jury nullification it wouldn't it wouldn't matter to me it's like well i have a strong case against you i know that i'm going to be able to present a case that's going to make the jury convict you so the fact you're talking about all this nonsense what does it matter the only reason it matters is because they don't have a case against you and they need to fill up the room full of smoke and confuse everybody and, and you're gonna you're gonna like blow away the smoke just like you said why hasn't your lawyer given you this uh, 34 page thing well it could have came out just recently <laughs> yeah he's been out of town uh, oh. I don't know how convenient uh, for him yeah the, yeah the good th the good thing about this though there is so much publicity on this case even if the judge does rule, yes, you can bring that up, and blah, 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 and even if she does tie my hands, whatever, okay, and she probably will, I'll tell you right now, no question. Millions of other jurors, potential jurors around the country are going to see this and say, what? You mean I can do that? And so I encourage everybody that loves the Lord and loves the Constitution, get on any jury you can. And yeah. if you think the law is wrong or is overreaching, or if it's a federal case, even a drug case, mm -hmm. if it's a federal drug case, but you don't think the feds ought to be involved in the drug war, okay? Then just don't say a word. Get on there, nod your head, smile, mm -hmm. look pretty, and when you get in the jury deliberation room after trial, then you vote not guilty and don't budge. Mm -hmm. They will they will be frantic. Yeah. Say, hey, we got to get this... Get this, you saw the evidence, obviously he's guilty. Yes, he is guilty of breaking the law, but the federal government has no business making that law. Mm -hmm. That's what jury nullification is about. So I hope this helps thousands of people. I hope this breaks the system down, because this is ruining families. Yeah. Read the kennel. <laughs> amen, amen. And I, I hope this I hope this helps set thousands free. Go ahead. Amen. No, Doc, Dr. Hoven, you, you said earlier, you know, you were kind of a questioning why the Lord would use you, and i got to say, sir, I'm not trying to build you up, but it's like when I talk to the, we've been trying to like break through the mainstream press, and there, it, there's no doubt in my mind that, this, that we, your story has what's called an embargo, right? Anybody who's actually subsidized by the government or funded by the government in any way, they've got a list of stories they cannot cover, otherwise the government will, you know, they'll, they'll suffer retribution. And so... The, the mainstream press who will not cover your story, they, they have what's called an embargo. But the, the problem with you, sir, and the, you know, the, the big problem that you've always had is you, nobody ever gives you an embargo and it never sticks. And so you just always say the truth no matter what. And, uh, and we praise God for you. And uh, so I think uh, you, have that, you have that attribute of always saying the truth. And uh, we, we praise There's God for that. nobody in this world like you. <laughs> Amen. That's, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I mean, there is nobody out there that compares to you.
Yeah, you, you, Broody, maybe. Nah, well, you have a unique ability of saying the truth, and the, I, my wife is very biased, so I, I praise God for my wife. But everybody else is scared when I try to get them to you know, talk about your case. Uh, it's, it's only rare individuals, and there are a few, and I, I sent you a list of people that have come out in support of you, and we praise God for them. And it is getting a, gra- a grassroots support, but this thing should be all over the mainstream news. It, the Christian persecution story is very big right now all over America. Your case is the... the the, what's it called? The cornerstone. I don't want to say the cornerstone, but it's like it's like a perfect example of Christian persecution in this country on American soil, and yet nobody will touch your specific story because they're scared to death of the IRS. See, if they grant this motion in limine, I think, you can ask Ernie, but I think... You have 60 seconds remaining. <laughs> if one of those topics does come up, they can hold them in contempt and give them six months in prison. So they could automatically give me six months more in prison, not because what I said wasn't true, but because I violated the judge's order that you can't talk about that. That's diabolical. Yeah, but it's a trick. It's a, it's, it's oh, a that sounded very, very important, and I'm not sure I picked up on it. Are you saying that if I publish this, it could get you in trouble for because you talked about it? In the courtroom. Oh, no, I, I want you to publish it. Okay. In the courtroom. If the judge grants this motion... And then somebody or I does bring up one of those topics, bang, bang, six months in prison without a trial. Wow. A judge can do six months without a trial. Wow. A crazy world. Now, the reason they chose a trial in this case, they want, they want to give me more than six months. They could have given me six months without this trial. Right. Contempt. Right. Let me call right back. Okay, okay. God bless. This is a global challenge. Please hold calls from... Get over an inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balance is $51.90. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial 1-877-650-4249. To hear the cost of this call, press 8 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To de- this call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, brother, I had one wild thought. Okay. Robert Batty claims, claims to be a tax blogger. Yep. That is no doubt a self-assigned title. Okay. Yep. Hey, how do you become a tax blogger? Where do you go to school for this? Okay. Anybody can claim to be a tax blogger. Or any, anybody can make a claim like that, okay? So why don't you get some folks to say, hey, I'm a tax blogger. <laughs> and call the U.S. attorney and say, is it, this is the purpose of this motion so that you could give him contempt of court without even going to trial if one of these is broken? What exactly is the mechanics of this motion in limiting? Find out and publish it. Yeah, okay, that's a good question. Um... Yeah, so may, here's, maybe here's a good idea, too. I'm just, uh, all of these U.S. attorneys, Pamela C. Marsh and Tiffany Hope Eggers, and even Judge Margaret Casey uh, Rogers, uh, she, you know, she has an assistant, and I can leave voicemail. What are some, su- what are some suggestions on questions that uh, either I should ask, or uh, I guess you probably shouldn't reach out directly in your voice. You know, I could record your voice. That may not be a good idea since you're, they're, they're your prosecuting attorneys. But what questions could I ask as a tax, tax blogger? Any suggestions? Well, you could try ask Ernie what to say, because I don't know all this stuff, but I really think if a motion in limine is granted, my limited understanding is that now gives them another club to beat me with. What if they said, you can't blink in the courtroom, <laughs> and the judge granted it? Well, hello, I have to blink once in a while. Yeah. Oh, well, there's six months in prison because you blinked. It's right. not against the law to blink, but it's against the law to, to violate the judge's order. Yeah, I see what you mean. Judge's order is, if the judge's order is stupid, like this one would be if it was passed, and probably will be, okay, then then you got to appeal it all. And the chance of winning on appeal is close to zero. Nobody wins on appeal. At first, nobody wins their case, and then nobody wins on appeal in the Supreme Court. Look at the statistics, for heaven's sake. Nobody's winning. Something is crooked with the system. That's what needs to be exposed. And boy, are they afraid of that. This is them going to lose control of the income. What would they do for a living? Like, oh, like maybe work, get a job? Uh, gee whiz. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, Amen. go ahead with your questions there, brother. Thank okay. you. That was encouraging. I'm glad they put that motion in. <laughs> you will grant it, and I predict that'll come back to bite her. Yeah. If this ever goes before Congress, and it should. Are you? Everybody needs to be calling your Congress. Are you um, okay. able to talk to um, Hanson now? No, no. He's in uh, way at the other end of the building. Maybe that's why we moved me. I don't know. I wasn't able to talk to him down there either. Uh, Are you going to be able to talk to him Friday? Hopefully, yeah, they'll probably take us down in the same squad car. Good. It doesn't matter. What he's doing is is different from what I'm doing. Uh, unrelated. I mean, we're co-defendants, but uh, he was he was the trustee of the ministry. He's got to defend the trust. I did everything I did, 100% on my own. Nothing to do with the trust. Well, let me ask you this, Dr. Hovind, regarding uh, the fact you're both co-defendants. Is it... Do you do you uh, get guilty or innocent together, or are they completely different trials? Even though you're both listed on the same case. Well, some of uh, some of the charges are just mine, and some of the charges are just his, and a couple of them they're together, like the conspiracy charge. That's us together. That's why they're holding the, the case together, the trial together. I see. I see. Okay. Interesting. Thanks for warning us about that uh, six dollar transaction fee. We changed it to a hundred dollars instead of twenty five. Well, you know, I was right, wasn't I? Seven dollars. Yeah, no, that was good. That was good. No, but that's okay. <laughs> we we live and live and learn and uh, keep moving on, right? So it's good stuff. Um, let me see here. I want to make sure I, I find. Uh, do you, uh, I think I've read all of that. I'm trying to think. Is there any other things we want to discuss? Um, you said to find the uh, fully informed jury, and there was another acronym. I'll try to look for that at, at the end of the kennel as well. Any any other uh, any other items we want to cover? No, I really hope God uses all of this to bring our country back to Him and back to our constitutional roots. That Amen. Amen. Grandchildren, my my grandchildren need to go out and ride their bicycle and play, and not worry about their future. Our future looks really bleak because some of these idiot pinky in the brain guys that want their one world government and their communist style of system, they don't care about my grandkids. Well, I do. Okay, and if they want to have a communist type government, then move over to one of those countries that already has one. I'll Amen. But we have got to get some patriots to wake up and quit worrying about who plays with the ball and what's happening to the future. Amen. This is a tip, this is a tipping point, brother. This is critical. Amen. Amen. Anyway, go for it. No, another another uh, another thing I wanted to bring up while I have you on the phone, and I just uh, my wife told me about it two or three days ago, but I've been so busy and other things I hadn't had a chance to look at it. But I just uploaded a video tonight showing IRS form two hundred and eleven, and it comes out of uh, IRS code section. I think it's section 7693 or something like that. But did you know that the IRS has an IRS whistleblower award program where if you turn in your neighbor that you can get up to 10% of everything the IRS collects from them? I, I heard about that. You told me the other day, can you call PCC and ask them, did you get this? Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, you know, I, I, I have talked to some people that are very familiar with their case and I'll, uh, they, I don't think they want to go listed on the record. But let me find something. Um, uh, where did I see that? Uh, I know I factually know that the Hortons laid claim to turning Kent in. I do not know if they were rewarded, but my assumption would be yes. And that was a person that ne doesn't necessarily want to become doesn't want his name to go public. But yeah, that's that's a fair question, right? I'll just call him and uh, tell him that I'm with the Rudy Davis a YouTube show, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, and I I would like to ask her her question. And if if she doesn't pick up the phone, I'll just leave it on her voicemail and, and ask her if she's ever seen IRS Form 211, and if she collected uh, up to 10 percent of everything they collected from you. And uh, how much they collected, if, if they collected anything. And we'll see what she says. She shouldn't be ashamed of what she did, right? If she's proud of what she did and she oh, thought... Sure. Yeah. Hey, ask Congress. Ask Congress to check into it. Call yeah. the congressman and say, look, would you call them and say, did you do this? Did you get paid? If, if that, the law says they can, so that's not a problem. And they obviously thought I was guilty of something or they wouldn't have done it. Right. Now, the fact that I have property next door to them and they want my property may or may not tie in. Oh. And here, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know that at all. But I think when, when this goes before Congress, and it should, they should call in the IRS and say, show us a copy of the check. 
call into Hortons. Did you get this? Did, did, you know, show the world needs to know about this form. Yes. All I have, brother, is is light and noise. I'm helpless here. I yeah. can't do anything else. Uh, and and it's the truth. It's it's amazing to me, Doctor Hovind, how you have remained in prison, moved around to twenty different prisons throughout your eight years and you have maintained your sanity uh your good uh you know your good i don't know uh, character you know just just your frame of mind you see you, you seem so well mannered and i can't even imagine being in prison like you know two or three months much less eight years and still being uh, in a, a good frame of mind as you are so you truly are an inspiration and uh uh, my goodness I'd be a grumpy old witch and i'd be furious <laughs> yeah well, I am a little furious about what they did, uh, and so. But if, I think if if they give me a check with enough, instead of Rosa County Sheriff's Office, if it's got enough zeros, I might be able to make up for lost time with my grandkids and family and wife. And, you know, amen, amen. I didn't ask for this. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. It's absolutely. Uh, yeah. The more I look into this case, the more it's like it blows me away. Uh, just with all the injustices at so many different levels, it's absolutely amazing. And. Uh, uh, we'll pray for that day of freedom very soon. Did you get the screenshots yet of the websites? The Rudy printed off and mailed? Yeah, well, we mailed uh, two Peter three screenshots to you. Hopefully, we'll be coming soon. What about the freak out of screenshots? I, I, go ahead. I didn't. Yeah, I did not get them yet. Okay. I didn't get them yet. I'd love to see it. Okay. No, uh, I need to. I need. There's so many things going on. I need. I still need to capture uh, Free Kent Hoven and mail those to you as well. Uh, I really look forward to you when you get a chance to get out and, and have access to this stuff yourself. But um, anything else, uh, babe? Uh, I'm trying to think. We will, we do need to. I, I wrote down Free Kent Hoven uh, screenshots. Yeah, especially this help page. You know, it says uh, ask media news outlets to get involved. It's got all the links. Ask your Congress representative to get involved, to find your Congress at this website. You can find who your congressman is, representative at this website, and mail in the letter. And it's got the document that they can just print off and sign and mail. And it's all kinds of, it's a, it's a resource page full of different ways to help. Well, John 3, 19 and 20. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Mm -hmm. The reason the government and the IRS does not want this stuff blown out there like we're doing is because they it's evil and they don't want it to be known. They want people to think they're upstanding, law-abiding citizens, and they want to be called, you know, rabbi, rabbi in the synagogues. And I think the, the pastors that are not supporting this need to read their Bible. For heaven's sake, look at all the prophets. Look at Jeremiah and how many of his fellow prophets went against him. Someone thought that we should contact Jim Baker because he had Alan Dershowitz get him out. What do you think of that idea? I don't know. Uh, I read his book. I, the title of the book is I Was Wrong. It's a fascinating book. Well done. I, I've never met him. I met Tammy Faye at the airport, Atlanta airport, with her new husband before she died. Um, and we sat and talked for a while. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to meet Jim Baker. I'd love to be on his program, go preach at his church sometime, wherever he's at, in Branson, Missouri, I believe. Uh, I would differ with him on a lot of theological stuff, unless he's changed. But he, he really, he was at the prison in Jessup, Georgia, where I was, only a different time. I didn't see him there. Yeah, I left him a voicemail and I sent the email to him. There's a few people going to contact him. Good. I already did, but I'll make it clear. I, I think they thought that maybe he would have some advice. Be, I don't know what they think, but we'll see if he calls. I just feel like it, it, I just feel like everybody should know about this by now, and if they haven't contacted us to find out how to help, then. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, the, the, you know, the thing is, Dr. Hoven, we live in a world where, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a very Christian-oriented world. The people that have stood up for you, I think, are very strong Christians and, you know, Bible believers. But the truth of the matter is, 
that mainstream, right? The people who watch the football and baseball and who, you know, were busy raising their family. We, you know, I don't want to give the wrong impression. It, like, it's still, it's, we, we're still working, like, to break through. Although God doesn't need a big army, right? Gideon didn't need a big army. But I would say in the, in the right, you know, in the Christian circles, in certain circles, it's, it's a very big issue, and we are, are getting a lot of traction. But we just want to get more, you know, because I think it deserves more. Um, but I was going through these... Jesus, Jesus yep. did not even attempt. Jesus made no attempt to get in the media or do anything else or convert the Roman Empire. He just simply preached, and he's known worldwide now. Amen. I sure don't have any, I don't have any goals to get known anywhere. I just want to hold my grandpa. <laughs> but, uh, ignore them. If the, if, the, if the mainstream media doesn't carry it, and the alternative media does then more people are going to contact their newspaper and say, look, cancel my subscription. You guys don't carry the real news. Just, we don't need you anymore. I believe that's happening. Which is probably why the Pensacola News Journal is so upset with... Yeah, the Pensacola News Journal is probably upset with me because I'm, for 25 years I get called once in a while, would you like to take the News Journal? I say, no, I don't have a parakeet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that. No, I, I, I was just making... I was making notes as you were talking, and I just want to make sure that you've got the main points because uh, you, you don't actually have it in front of you and you may actually go to trial before I, I get a chance to get this mailed to you. I'm sure you will. But they don't want you mentioning jury nullification. They don't want you mentioning any possible penalties for the crimes that they're charging you with. So uh, whatever they want to charge you with, they, they, they want it to charge you with it without the jury note, note, noting that it could carry 10 to 20 years. Uh, they they don't want you to be able to mention any prior allegations of this judge, like for instance that she said it was worse than rape and it didn't make it on the trial transcript. They don't want you to mention any allegations against previous IRS uh, agents or attorneys or, or U.S. attorneys that came against you, specifically John David Roy Atchison or uh, IRS agent Scott Schneider. Seconds remaining. And they don't want you to mention any changes of policy, like for instance, uh, the policy that the IRS has apologized for applying structuring laws. So I just wanted to make sure that's in your head because you will not be, be able to see this form uh, before your trial on Friday. Well, no, uh, my public defender will hand me a copy of it, and that's not a problem. Okay, okay. Yeah, very, very interesting. Okay, very good, very good. Questions you want to do tonight, I'd be thrilled to call back. Yeah, we do have we do have a few, and we can start a new round of Bible questions. Absolutely, sir. Are you guys going to upload this call? All right, because that. Are, are you uploading this call? If he tells, yeah, if please do, yeah. Okay, I'll upload oh, everything. Right. Absolutely, amen, brother. Nothing to hide. No, I know. Uh, amen. Upload it all. Okay, thank you. Okay. Got right, over. An inmate at the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office. This call will be recorded and monitored. Your advance pay account balance is thirty-seven dollars eighty-three cents. For customer assistance, billing inquiries, or to block future calls, dial one eight seven seven six five zero four two four nine. To hear the cost of this call, press eight now. To accept this. This, this call is subject to monitoring and recording. Do not use three-way or call waiting features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hey, brother, do you see how they, the, the playing field is so slanted? Yes. 4,000 rules that make it impossible for the truth to get out. And then they brag about how many cases they win. And we got the largest prison system in the world. It's time for the American people to say, Congress, shut the budget off. This Justice Department obviously has way too much time on their hand and way too much money to work with. They spent well over $300,000 on this guy. That's just for this case. Yeah, that's insane. For that. Shut, unplug their budget, for heaven's sake. Amen. The reason, the only reason they are doing this is because they get paid to do it. <laughs> None of them would, Batty wouldn't volunteer his time. Right. But the IRS is probably, you know, we need you out there, blast this guy, blast him, make him look bad. Okay. Well, every time Batty opens his mouth, it makes me look good and him look bad. I yeah. So let him, let him talk. But, uh, yeah, so the, the unplug the budget. What are, why are we paying these people? Yeah. Who's paying them anyway? <laughs> hey, man, uh, who's paying them anyway? Uh, wh where does the Federal Reserve get all their money from? Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Bro. Okay, all right, I'm going to stop it.